Hi friends, uh, hello everyone, hope and pray that all of you are fine. Uh, it's been quite a while that I have been uh, thinking of uploading this video. The talk that I have chosen for you today is that it, it seems very often, it seems very challenging to us that how do we start speaking English? Because we are caught up in so many things of grammar, grammar, grammar everywhere. But if you, you know, look at it very uh, closely, you will find that most of the things that you study in grammar do not count when it comes to speaking English. I do not undermine the importance of grammar. It's so important really. Yes, it is. But that is when it comes to uh, formal talking, when it comes to writing, in, when it comes to speaking, very little of grammar is uh, you know, used and very little of grammar is observed when it comes to spoken English. So today I'm going to tell you that how is it that with minimum use of grammar, how can you speak fluently, how can you speak effortlessly? You see, when, when we think about English, what stops us from you know, uh, speaking English is the consciousness of not knowing the grammar. But the thing is that, is it really necessary that we should know all the grammar that is there in the English if we want to speak English? Certainly not. Say, for example, when you think of English language, you think of nouns, you think of verbs, you think of adverbs, adjectives, and so many things, interjections, conjunctions, prepositions, infinitives, gerunds, and tenses, present tense, past tense, uh, past participle, uh, participle uh, you know, uh, present indefinite, past indefinite, continuous, if perfect, perfect, continuous. And all this, you know, it, it, it bamboozles us that, what do I do? There are so many things that have to be done, and I don't know, we feel like I don't know. But the question is, do we really need to know all these things? Well, if you ask me, we do need to know all these things, but that is when you are going for writing some examination, when you are caught up in some formal discourse. To begin with, to start to speak English, you really do not need all these things. You need to have an idea of it, but you don't need to know it all. For that matter, say for example, there are 12 forms of tense. There are 12 forms of tense when it comes to active voice and there are 8 more forms when it comes to passive voice. So 20 forms of tense. But do we really know, need to know all these 20 forms of tense to speak English? What if I tell you only 2 forms of tense that will enable you to speak very good English? And I can assure you that you would never ever be wrong if you use only these 2 tense forms. You don't have to know grammar, you don't have no adjective, adverb and everything. You need to know only two forms of tense to start speaking English and that too good English. For that matter, say, you know, when, when we talk, we talk about present, we talk about past and we talk about future. And if I tell you that in only two tense forms, you can talk about all these, you can talk about present, you can talk about past, you can talk about future. And these two tense forms are one is present continuous. And two is present perfect. You need only these two tense forms to talk about present, to talk about past and to talk about future. When you talk about present, for example, we usually say Jack works in a bank. We use present simple for it. But do I tell you that majority of the speakers that I hear and I have heard, they usually say Jack is working in a bank and the meaning is very easily conveyed. And you are not wrong. You are not wrong because people do understand when you say my father is working in a bank rather than you say my father works in a bank. Although which is grammatically 100% correct to say my father works in a bank. But if you say my father is working in a bank there is nothing wrong. Jack goes to school. Jack is going to school. In spoken English it doesn't make much difference most of the time. 99% of time it doesn't make any difference if you say Jack goes to school or Jack is going to school. So, you can use present continuous for present tense, for talking about what is happening in present. Although we use present simple for talking about routines, day-to-day -day routines, permanent routines. But if you use present continuous, there is nothing wrong. You can use present continuous for routines that are day-to-day -day routines, that are permanent routines. There is nothing wrong about it when it comes to spoken English. Although when we write, we have to be a little more careful. So, my point, the first point is that you use present continuous for talking about present situations. Whether the situation is a permanent routine or for that, even if it is a temporary routine, for that we usually use present continuous. So, Jack is working in a bank. He is waiting for you. My father works in a government office. My brother lives in Delhi 
or is living in Delhi, there is nothing wrong. You can use this present simple and present continuous interchangeably when it comes to spoken English especially, there is nothing wrong. So you can use present continuous for present tenses, nothing wrong at all. And do I tell you, when it comes to talking about future, you can again use the same tense. You can use this present continuous tense to talk about future without having any shade of doubt. Without being conscious that you will never ever be wrong if you use present continuous to talk about future. For example, I'm going to Delhi tomorrow. We are meeting next week. What am I doing is I'm simply using present continuous. I'm going to Delhi and then I do, I use an adverb of future time. I'm going to Delhi tomorrow. Even if you do not use, even if you do not use adverb of future time, it does in its own context explain that it belongs to future. My brother is returning from Mumbai next week. Or my brother is returning from Mumbai very soon. We are going to play a cricket match in the evening. They are coming here tomorrow. I'm going to watch a movie tomorrow evening. He is coming here next month. He is going there next year. So you can use present continuous. I already said you can use for all present situations. You can use present continuous. And now I'm telling you that you can use present continuous always to talk about future as well. There is nothing wrong. You don't need to look for future continuous, future simple, future perfect. You can always use present continuous for future simple. For example, I said, I'm going to meet my friends tomorrow. So here I'm using present continuous for future simple. We are going to play a cricket match tomorrow. Again, you see, I'm using present continuous for future tense. I'm going to finish my work tomorrow in the evening. I'm going to finish my work tomorrow in the evening. I'm, this time I'm using present continuous instead of future perfect. I'm using present continuous to convey the idea of completion. So you can use present continuous for future perfect as well. This is what I say that present continuous can be used for present tenses and it can be used for future tense as well. So the first thing, first two situations are resolved for you. One, you can use present continuous for present tense, for present tense situations. And you can also use the same present continuous for future tense situations. So you need to remember very little. You don't have to know all the grammar. All you need to do is you have to remember present continuous situation. Present continuous will help you to talk about all the present situations and present continuous will help you to talk about all the future situations as well. So one tense form present continuous resolves your situations for present tense and for future as well. When it comes to present tense, I'll give a couple of more examples. For example, my brother is living in Delhi. My father is working in a government office. They are living in the next street. So, although we use present simple in such situations, but when it comes to spoken English, there is nothing wrong about using present continuous even for present simple. And then I said that we can use same present continuous for future situations. For example, I'm going there tomorrow. They are returning from London next week. We are shifting to the new house next month. So here I'm using present continuous for future situations. Now remains only one thing that is past. For past situations, I would give you a very simple and very plain use. Again of present tense. And this time you're going to use present perfect. Have finished has finished. Now, I suppose you know when to use has and when to use have. Has is used when you use it for third person singular, he, she, it, and all singular nouns. And have is used when you use it for plurals, when you use it for you, I, uh, and all plural nouns. And 
Now, for example, I have finished my work. Although I am using present perfect, but I am talking about the past. I have seen many movies. I have uh, been there. He has won many awards. Although we understand when we use present perfect, we usually do not use the adverb of time. We do not give the perfect idea of time in the past. But when it comes to spoken English, who cares? Who bothers whether you use an adverb or you don't use an adverb? We usually, when we use an adverb of past time, we use past simple. And we use past perfect for past, present perfect for past actions when we do not use adverb of time. But when it comes to spoken English, it really does not matter whether you use an adverb of time or you don't use an adverb of time. You can always talk about the things that have happened in the past using present perfect. Have plus third form of the verb. I have finished the work. He has done his homework. He has written his examination. She has gone to London. They have shifted to a new house. He has been transferred. They have deposited the money. He has submitted the form, application form. So, boys and girls, what I want you to understand is that speaking English is all about talking about present, past and future. And you saw how I used only two tense forms. Out of 20, 12 plus 8, out of 20, I use only two tense forms to talk about present, to talk about past and to talk about future. I suppose you know it very well. Now you need to know only two things. You need to know present continuous and you need to know present perfect if you want to speak English. And for that matter, you need to know present continuous. That means is, am, are and uh, in form of the verb for present continuous. And when it comes to present perfect, you use has, have followed by third form of the verb. If you learn these two basic tense forms, you are good enough to speak English. I'll be carrying forward all this and if you like the video, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you will hit the bell icon and you will subscribe to our channel. I'll be coming up with much easier ways, much easier tactics of starting speaking and you know being confident about your speaking English. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and bye-bye.